With the collective genius we have on the planet, we could be investing in great things, like healing AIDS, like ending starvation, like negotiating conflict in place of war, like feeding and sheltering and training and educating in place of crime, like replenishing inorganic cell salts back into soil, food, and into our bodies in place of depleted processed foods, meds, and other pharmaceuticals. We have barely scratched the surface of our possibilities in life. Collective genius. Collecting our genius together and creating a critical mass that intends to make this a planet that is proactive towards becoming the civilized world we are meant to be. Without Machiavellian influences trying to dump us down or make us think we are a bunch of Darwinian killer dudes. I gotta tell you about the inorganic cell salts. I was down at Esalen a few years ago and I met someone from Finland who turned me on to these salts and apparently there was a man named Dr. Schusler. Back in 1837, I think, he discovered that when the body is reduced to ashes, what's left are these 12 salts. And you could pretty much measure the salts and tell what the person died of because they were lacking in a particular salt. We don't really get access to these cell salts and processed foods anymore, so our bodies break down. So Dr. Schuster's 12 Tissue Remedies is the book that you can find the definitions of these salts, the organic chemistry, makeup of these salts. They basically are, you know, you put them under your tongue, they're titrated in a molecular state so they go right into your bloodstream, bypass your digestive tract and reconstruct the molecular structures that you need in order to produce new cells of whatever variety. So when the molecular chains of these salts are broken, disease ensues. We get sick. When our foods are processed, these salts are reduced or eliminated and the body breaks down. When we eat whole food, and we can buy whole food in any produce department, then these cell salts are um, available. If you buy processed food, anything that's been through a factory, chances are your cell salts are not available in that food and your body is going to get sick. And pharmaceuticals apparently use the cell salts to feed us back what we need to stay alive. That's not a way to be healthy. So get yourself some whole food or get some cell salts into your body so that you can like, get your constitution back together again. There's a great one called califosforicum, which is great for your nerves if you're anemic meaning you don't have uh, many red blood cells, therefore you don't have much energy. You can take ferrous phosphoricum, ferrum phosphoricum. Um, uh, if your body's drying up and you need moisture, the intracellular fluid is managed by something called natrium muriaticum, which is um, actually table salt that's reduced to a molecular level, not the kind that you eat at the table. Not the kind that's going to give you high blood pressure. Anyway, there are 12 of them. Learn about those. You can check them out on the site. We need a platform, a civilized society, to begin to deal with the physical, psychological, biological, ecological, sociological damage generated by this economy from all of these war, crime, and disease industries. Let's leave this tired old Machiavellian nightmare and shut the industries that manufacture weapons of destruction. There are lots of useful, healthy projects that can replace these idiotic reruns of miserable ways to make a profit. We don't want their money, and we certainly will no longer die for their good ideas. We won't sit around and wait for their war, crime, and disease industries to decide our fates just to put some meaningless bucks into their pockets? No way! We, the American people, are done with being the last to know about the horror stories our duplicious ways of doing commerce have made possible on this planet and we are waking up like Adam never did. So what do we mean by war, crime, and disease industries? What we mean is that for several hundreds of years, our economies have been built on these industries. The effects of generating wealth, using human beings as fodder for profits in these industries kill us, incarcerate us, which means puts us in prison, and sickens us intentionally and periodically like clockwork. We think we can encourage, through Noodle Brain, we can encourage the aristocracy to listen up and invest in projects and industries that are out to provide quality of life issues for us instead of hurting us. 
and we collectively can demonstrate that we're going to invest in those projects anyway, so they might as well jump the fence and come along. We have a deep concern for what is happening in America and therefore the world. There are many questions about the 9-11 event that suggest that our government created that event, or if not, at least knew it was going to happen and allowed it. To have an excuse to become a world empire. There is no investigative function supported by the American press that can dig deeply into this issue. There have been attempts by the families of the victims, and those attempts are not being represented in the media for the American people to even consider. Democracy. Webster's defines it thus. A government by the people, especially the rule of the majority. A government in which supreme power is vested in the people and exercised by them directly or indirectly through a system of representation usually involving periodically held free elections a political unit that has a democratic government. The principles and practices of the Democratic Party in the U.S. The common people, especially when constituting the source of political authority. The absence of hereditary and arbitrary class distinctions or privileges. Mm. Well, judge for yourself. Do we have it? This is a paradoxical time when the supposedly most democratic nation in the world is killing others in the name of democracy while behaving as imperialist. Talk about a catch-22. If you are against this administration's policies, you are considered to be a person that hates America. Whereas if you really love America, you gotta be out there protesting these policies because they are not representative of America at all. So take a deep breath. And don't let anybody fool you into thinking that this war in Iraq is honorable. War. War is a noun, and in the Webster's Dictionary it says, a state of usually open and declared armed hostile conflict between states or nations. A second definition is a state of hostility, conflict, or antagonism. Another a struggle between opposing forces for a particular end. Wait, because the real America is about to show up any day now and end this nightmare. We're not so stupid to be blinded to the fact that the Bush administration and our Congress, as well as the press, present a world theater in which biblical dogma gets enacted to instill superstition and fear into the minds of the uneducated and God-fearing people to gain their support in their own demise. This is so stupid. In the meantime, the latest medical crisis will distract us, crime will distract us, and our own ability to stay afloat in an economy falling apart around us will ultimately keep us insecure and unable to unravel the likes of this duplicity. What can we do to turn this around? Get civilized. That means get our integrity intact so we can have some control over our own fates and not be duped by anything. How do we get civilized? Realize the power of language and use it. Totalitarianism. Of a relating to centralized control by an autocratic leader or hierarchy. Authoritarian, dictatorial, especially despotic. Of or relating to a political regime based on subordination of the individual to the state and strict control of all aspects of life and productive capacity of the nation, especially by coercive measures, as censorship and terrorism. Sounds like America right now, huh? What happened to our democracy?